These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together, they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. And taking on the might of our quiz goliaths today are the Dartford Wobblers from Kent. This team of friends have quizzed together for more than 20 years and currently test their brain cells at the Malt Shovel Pub in Dartford. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Kevin, I'm 52 and I'm a gas engineer. Hi, I'm Howard, I'm 55, I'm a bricklayer and builder. Hi, I'm John, I'm 52 and I'm a sole trader. Hi, I'm Chris, I'm 55 and I'm a technician. Hi, I'm John, I'm 55 and I'm a retired civil servant. So Kevin and team, welcome. Oh, Hi, Jeremy. Jeremy. So you tell Hi, us Jeremy. about the Malt Shovel, what kind of place is it? The Malt Shovel is a small pub in Dartford on East Hill. And you're there um, a lot? And we're there a lot. Every, yeah. every, 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 month, month, every, every month, month, every Monday. Monday. So you, you've quizzed together for some, some years now? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, quite a few years. Yeah. And, and are you feeling like this is the moment to take them apart? Uh, ooh, I don't Maybe. know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if the Dartford Wobble name was in anticipation of what will happen in this match. Uh, well, uh, if we win, we'll get very wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's based on a bird, though, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the Dartford bird. Wobbler was, um, is a small bird native to the heathlands of Dartford. Um, and we've, we've corrupted the name to sort of describe the state of us after a Monday evening's quizzing in the Mulch okay. Well, good luck here. I hope there's no wobbling. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. However, if they fail to defeat the Eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So, Dartford Wobblers, the Eggheads have won just the last game, which means that £2,000 says you can't beat them today. Would you like to go ahead? Let's go. Yeah. The first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of geography. Who would like this? Oh, right. Okay. What should we, we say? Is it going to be yeah. me? Yeah. 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 He's decided. OK. It's, it's, uh, it, that's down to me. Howard, all right. On geography against any one of them. Mm. Oh, I th mm, what think do you reckon? Howard? Tremendous, yeah. tremendous, tremendous knowledge, knowledge Dave. Dave. Yeah. Dave, yeah. Dave, yeah. Dave, should we? Yeah. yeah. Uh, right, can I uh, pick... Tremendous knowledge, Dave, please. You can indeed, Howard, from the Dartford Wobblers against Tremendous Knowledge Day from the Eggheads. To ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions in the question room. So, geography for you, Howard? Yes, it is. And would you like to go first or second? Oh, I think I'll take the first set, please, Jerry. Here we go with your question. Port Said, at the northern end of the Suez Canal, is a city in which country? Is it Egypt, Syria or Turkey? Right, let me think. Um, I know it's definitely not Syria. Um, I don't think it's Turkey either. I believe it, that is in Egypt. It is in Egypt. You're right, Howard. Your question, Dave. Which of these is a the nickname for the city of Dallas? Is it the Windy City, City of Brotherly Love or Big D? Yeah, the city of Brotherly Love is Philadelphia. Windy City is Chicago, but I think it is used for some of the US cities, but... Dallas is the big D. The big D is Dallas. You're right. Howard, back to you. The Woodhead Pass and the Snake Pass cross which range of hills? Is it the Quantock Hills, Pennines, or South Downs? Um, right, let me have a look at this. Um, and that's not the South Downs, because that's quite close to where we, we come from. Um, Quantocks, I'm not sure exactly where they are, but I believe that would be the Pennines. Playing with confidence, Howard. You got it right. Well done. OK, Dave, your question. What name is given to the narrow, rocky gorge that is a tourist attraction in the Fraser River Canyon in British Columbia? Is it Hell's Gate, Hope Springs or Horseshoe Point? Never heard of it. Um, just because it sounds like a gorge. I'll go Hell's Gate, but I've never heard of it. Yeah, Hell's Gate is right. <laughs> Oh, you nearly had him there, Howard. Ooh. Here's your third question. Hualamphong Station is the main railway station in which city? Is it Seoul, Bangkok or Phnom Penh? I'll spell it, it's all one word. H-U-A-L-A-M-P-H-O-N-G. Right, um, sounds like it could be any of these. I've never heard of it. Um, so, 
I think, um, I don't think it's sold, I don't know why, no reason behind it. Um, I think I'll go for Bangkok. Is he right, Dave? I would have gone Bangkok myself, yeah. Bangkok is correct. Three out of three. Good play, no wobbles there. OK, your question, Dave, to stay in. The Ubari Lakes form part of a Saharan oasis in which country? Is it Libya, Chad or Sudan? Uh, I don't think it's Chad. Is it Sudan or is it Libya? Go, Libya. Do you think he's right? I think in Libya. Yeah, the, the, the challenges are all thinking you're right, and you are right, Dave. Libya is all correct. Right, well fine. done. No, it's a 50-50. So, <laughs> OK, well, you did everything you had to do there, Howard, but you didn't quite knock him out. We go to sudden death. It gets a little bit harder because I don't give you alternative answers. The Welsh town of Abergwine has what English name that comes from a Scandinavian term meaning fish-catching enclosure? Um, oh, it's difficult. I can't say I've ever heard of it. Um, Fish catching enclosure. Um, could it be fish guard? Well done. You got it right. Fish guard is correct. So, Dave, pressure on you now. You've got to get this right to stay in. Uhuru Peak is part of which African mountain? Uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Mount Kilimanjaro is the right answer. <laughs> Playing well on sudden death, you two. Howard, American Samoa is located in which ocean? Right, American Samoa. Um, oof. It could be one of the two, <clears throat> I should imagine. Um, but um, I think I'll think it's in the Pacific Ocean. Pacific is the right answer. <clears throat> no one, we've got a quiz team on, on here, haven't we, Eggheads? You can tell. Very, very good. OK, so un under pressure again, Dave, on sudden death. Get this one wrong, you're out. Wilpatu National Park, which is renowned for its large leopard population, is located in which Asian country? Wilpatu is W-I-L-P-A-T-T-U. I think it could be the end of the road, this. Um, can you spell it again for me, please? W-I-L-P-A-T-T-U. So got a large leopard. Population. Will Patu. Um, India. Well, you're close, but no cigar. Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka's the answer, and you've got it wrong, and that means on sudden death, Dave is out and Howard is in the final round. Well done. First blood to the Wobblers. Please come back. So, as it stands, the Dartford Wobblers have not lost any brains from the final round. Whilst the eggheads have lost one, the next subject is arts and books. So, which of you would like this? You had you had shall I do it? Shall I do it? Yeah, go on. Sacrificial lamb. Yeah. yeah, sacrificial lamb. Who shall I go for? Then? John against anyone but Dave. Go on, who do you think? Who do you think? Pat. Who? Pat. 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 Okay, Pat. I'll take on. Pat. 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 Here we are. It's you. Me? Definitely you. Yeah, Pat from the Eggheads against John from the Dartford Wobblers. And just to ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions. John, you're a retired civil servant. That's right, yep. And you stood for Parliament. I did, yes, in 2010 for the fancy dress party. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm just trying to remember, I don't think you won the seat, but uh, re refresh my memory. Which seat uh, did you stand in? Yeah, I stood in the Dartford constituency. You're quite right, I didn't win the seat. I didn't even retain my deposit. I got the princely sum of 207 votes. But you, you had some fun in the election campaign, I bet. I did, yeah. Very good fun, yeah. OK, well, good luck in this round as well. Out of fancy dress for arts and books, you can choose whether you go first or second. Uh, I'll go first, please. Here we go. John, which creature drawn by Pablo Picasso was chosen as the emblem for the first international peace conference in Paris in 1949, dog, donkey, or dove? Well, I don't know the answer to this, but I don't think I wouldn't associate dog or or donkey come to that with peace. Um, I would certainly associate a dove with peace. So, on that basis alone, I'm going to go for dove. Dove, it is. Well done. Pat, to your question, which artwork has the alternative name of La Gioconda in the gallery in which it hangs? Is it Mona Lisa, 
the birth of Venus or the Night Watch? I think La Gioconda was the title of the woman who sat for the Mona Lisa. And which gallery is that, by the way? I think it hangs in the Louvre. I don't think it ever goes anywhere. It's in the Louvre in Paris. You're right. You're right. It is the Mona Lisa. Well done. OK, John, your question. Dog Days and Cabin Fever are books in which series for young people? Is it The Shapeshifter, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, or The Hunger Games? Hmm. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, I don't know this at all. Uh, dog Days. Shapeshifter sounds like it's something to do with wolves and, and what have you. Um, hmm. I, I really, I can't even um, eradicate any of them. I'm just going to have to have a guess. I think I'm going to go for the Hunger Games. I have no reason for that, but that's the one I'm plumping for. Diary of a Wimpy Kid is the answer. OK, over to you, Pat, to take the lead. Which organisation for which George Orwell worked from 1941 to 1943 is thought to have provided the inspiration for the Ministry of Truth and Room 101 in his novel 1984? Is it the BBC, Foreign Office or British Museum? Uh, my first thought was BBC, but I'm not certain. Um... He was, uh, he was pretty left-wing, I think. I'm not sure the Foreign Office would have been a very congenial place for George Orwell. I think it was the BBC. You're absolutely right, it was the BBC. I don't know whether there was a particular room he had in mind. Maybe just around the back of uh, the Egghead studio here. <laughs> room 101. You got it right, Pat, well done. So he's in the lead. You need to get this one right, John, OK? Eva, a Russian woman working for British intelligence during World War II, is a central character in which novel by William Boyd? Is it Any Human Heart, Restless, or Waiting for Sunrise? Well, uh, once again, I, I don't know the book. Um, there's nothing there that's going to give me any kind of indication. So once again, I'm afraid it's going to have to be a guess. I went down the right last time and it was wrong. Oh, dear. Um, any human heart. It's restless. Restless is the answer, John. Sorry you've been knocked out by Pat. Never easy to beat him, though, particularly on arts and books. You won't be in the final. He will. Please, if you can, rejoin your teams. So, as it stands, the Dartford Wobblers have lost one brain from the final round. The Eggheads have also lost one. The next subject is music. All right, music. Yeah. Music, right. sorry. Right. Yeah. You definitely Chris. we've agreed, we've agreed, we've agreed yeah. you, Chris. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I'll go with Chris. Yeah. Chris on music, okay. Which egghead would you like, Chris? Judith, please. Oh, straight there. <laughs> I don't want to play this one. <laughs> oh, you don't want to? No, I want to do arts and books. And... <laughs> She's jolly cross. <laughs> okay, Chris from the Dartford Wobblers versus a very, very cross Judith from the eggheads. <laughs> yes. To ensure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in the question room? So, Judith, you wanted arts and books? Yes, I like arts and books. And you've got music instead? Yes. But there is a, a little silver lining here, isn't there? What's that? It's not sport. But, oh, well, I don't know. Well, music <laughs> and sport are now... I'm rather better now... at the sport than I was. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so you're, you're, the gleam in your eye is for your next sporting round, is it? <laughs> OK, we'll hold you to that. But anyway, we're on music here, and, Chris, you can choose the first or second set of questions. Uh, I'd like to go first, please, Jeremy. Here we go with your first question, then. It's late September and I really should be back at school is a line from which song? Billie Jean, Maggie May or Jolene? Well, being a bit of a Rod Stewart fan, I'd say it was uh, Maggie May. It's a great line as well, isn't it? Maggie May, well done. <laughs> OK, Judith, which song from the musical Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat became a UK number one single for Jason Donovan in 1991. Is it Close Every Door, Those Canaan Days, or Any Dream Will Do? Um, I love that title, Those Canaan Days. Or was that really a song? Um, I think it's Any Dream Will Do. Any Dream Will Do is the right answer. Back to you, Chris. In a famous Morecambe and Wise sketch, Eric and Ernie make breakfast to which piece of popular music? Is it The Entertainer, The Pretender or The Stripper? 
Um, I don't think it's the entertainer. Pretty sure it's not the pretend. I think it's the stripper. The stripper is the right answer. <laughs> OK, Judith, your question now to catch up. Which early style of blues music began in the Mississippi region in the early 20th century? Is it Delta Blues, Rocky Mountain Blues, or New England Blues? Well, I think the Mississippi is the one with the Delta, but it's not in the Rocky Mountains or in New England. So, logically, it should be Delta Blues. Delta Blues is quite right. OK, over to you, Chris. Everyone's got two. Who was appointed composer in residence at Classic FM in 2008? Is it Dave Arch, Howard Goodall, or Barrington Philong? Well, classical's not really my thing. Um, I know Howard Goodall's been in the news lately. Um, I think I'd go for Howard Goodall. Nice one. You're right. It is Howard Goodall. Well done. OK, so a bit of pressure on Judith here, who wasn't, wasn't a happy bunny playing this round. We could see that. The actress Minna Plena was the first wife of which composer? Is it Franz Lehar, Richard Wagner, or Hector Bellio? Richard Wagner was married to someone else. Cosima. Cosima. Hector Berlioz. I think it's Franz Lehar because he did sort of light operas and things that suit marrying an actress for that. Yeah, a good bit of psychology there. So he, because he did light music, he would have married an actress. Anyone help us with Richard Wagner's wives? You, you were saying Cosimo, Cosiman? His, his, second, his second wife was Cosimo von Bulov. His first wife was Minna Plana. OK, Minna Plana was his first wife. The Cosima von Bulow was his second. So... Oh, von Bulow, that's yeah. right. Yeah, sorry, I Judith. I knew she called Cosima. How about that, Chris? You knocked her out. Well, thank on you. music. <laughs> it was 3-2 on the, on the night, as they say, and Judith won't be in the final round. Please, both of you, rejoin your teammates. Kevin, it's going well. Very well. I think it's, uh, it's going to plan. Well. We ripped several plans up, so I'm not sure which <laughs> plan it's going to, but it's going to one of them. It's going, you've managed to annoy Judith, which is good. Uh, <laughs> you, you've knocked out, tremendous knowledge has been knocked out. Pat's still in. That's annoying, but let's see what you can do now. It's sports. So which of you wants sports? Me, you know, that's what we said. That's, that's, that's what we said. That's the one. Yeah. That's the one, then. Is that you, John? Dan, no, no, it's, it's Kevin. Oh, Kevin. That's OK. Me. That's me. OK, okay yeah. right. Well, um, Kevin, tell us Kevin or Daphne. Kevin on Kevin, maybe? I think, I think probably Daphne, I would have Kevin, Daphne's, 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 Daphne's good at sport. I know she's. Mm. So is Kevin. So is Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't and I would, I would be honoured to play Daphne. So, uh, okay. Daphne, it's you. <laughs> honoured to play you, Daphne. Oh, <laughs> I wish you were. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin from the Dartford Wobblers versus Daphne from the Eggheads, please take your positions now. Kevin, would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first, please, Jeremy. Here's your question. Which of these sporting trophies has an elephant on top and cobras for handles? Is it the Ascot Gold Cup, Calcutta Cup or the FA Cup? Well, thankfully, the, the answer I had in my head's come up. I'm not saying it's the right one, but um, I was thinking of one before the three options came up. Um, I know it's not the FA Cup and I don't think it's the Ascot Gold Cup, but the answer I had in my head was the Calcutta Cup. Calcutta Cup is correct. Well done. <laughs> Daphne, your question. The IJF is a charity for people who've been injured taking part in which sport? Is it boxing, horse racing or cycling? That's the injured jockeys fund, so it's horse racing. Yes, you're right. It, is, and it also is the injured jockeys fund. Horse racing is right. Kevin, in late 2012, which Formula One team signed Nico Hulkenberg and Esteban Gutierrez for the 2013 season. Is that Mercedes, Force India or Sauber? No oh idea. Um, it's not really my field, motorsport, Jeremy. Um, and I must confess, I don't know the answer to this one. Um, I'm going to rule out Force India. I don't know why. And I think it's between Mercedes and Sauber. I've got a feeling that Mercedes have just taken two drivers on that, that aren't the names you give me. I'm going to go for Sauber, Jeremy. You've guessed it, or, or slightly known it very well there. Salva is right. Kevin, nice one. And people come unstuck on Formula One, don't they, Daphne? Mm -hmm. 
Here's your question, Daphne. At the 2012 Olympics, when Lewis Smith won a silver medal on the pommel horse, who won the bronze? Oh. Was it Max Whitlock, Daniel Purvis, or Christian Thomas? Oh, dear. Everybody focused on Lewis. I can't remember. Sorry, team. Christian Thomas. The answer is Max Whitlock. Okay, so a little bit of an advantage there. You're in the lead, Kevin, which means that if you take this one, you are in the final as well, and it puts your team in quite a strong position as well for that final round. Here we go. Which English football club was founded as Small Heath Alliance? Is it Birmingham City, Blackburn Rovers, or Bolton Wanderers? Well, Jeremy, when the, when the question came up, I had another team in my head. And unlike the first round, the team I had in my head hasn't come up this time. So I'm going to have to apply some sort of geographical logic. And I have a feeling in the back of my head, and I don't know why, that Small Heath is an area of Birmingham. So I'm going to go for Birmingham City, Jeremy. Yeah, I think there is a, a parliamentary constituency called Birmingham Small Heath. So you're absolutely right, Kevin. Birmingham City is right. You played very well there. You got three out of three. <laughs> Daphne, they're a good team, aren't they? Mm. They're real quizzes and you've been knocked out. Come back and rejoin your teams and we will play the final. So this is what we've been playing towards. It is time for the final round, which as always is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head to heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So John from the Dartford Wobblers and Judith, Dave and Daphne from the Eggheads. Would you please leave the studio? So you've done well to, to only lose one on the way here. Kevin, Howard, John and Chris, you're now playing to win the Dartford Wobblers £2,000. Pat and Kevin, looking a little bit lonely there, you're playing for something that money can't buy, which is the Eggheads reputation, which has been knocked around a bit recently. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time the questions are all general knowledge and you are allowed to confer. So Dartford Wobblers, the question is, are you able with your four brains to defeat the Eggheads too? And would you like to go first or second? Uh, we'd like to go first, please, Jeremy. OK, John and team, here we go. The politician Boris Johnson attended which public school? Is it Eton, Harrow or Winchester? Eton. Mm -hmm. Have you got an inkling at all? Eton. 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 It so wasn't Winchester. Yeah, I think Eaton is part think... of that. Any part of that gang? I think yeah. it's yeah, it. I think so. You reckon? Yeah. I'm, I will. It, it could be either Eaton or Harrow. Oh, but my, my, it was my leaning leaning is Eaton. 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 Yeah. 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 Eaton. Chris. Eaton. Um, we'll go for Eaton, please. Eaton is the right answer. Over to you, Eggs. Which day of the calendar year is traditionally the last full day of the Venice Carnival? Is it Christmas Eve, Shrove Tuesday, or All Souls Day? Oh. I mean, it's a uh, carnival. carnival. Carnival takes place L in the in Lent. Yeah, the February, March period. And Shrove Tuesday yeah, is so the using up of the eggs and milk before the hmm. fast period yeah. starts. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? yeah, should be Shrove Tuesday, like, like most of the European carnival. All Souls Day is the second of November, so it's my birthday. So. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, like most of the big um, carnivals, Jeremy, we think this is Shrove Tuesday. Shrove Tuesday is quite right. And you're both world quiz champions, aren't you? We, we have yes. both won it, yes. Yeah. You are both. You're, yeah. So you're taking on two world quiz champions, double the firepower. Your second question, team. Mealworms are the larvae of which type of insect? Is it wasp, beetle or fly? Right. Mealworms. Right, I, I do know. I, I, I do know this. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do know this. It's, it's not a wasp. It's not. Oh, a, say, it's yeah. not a fly. Yeah. Um, so that means the uh, beetle. How do you know it then, Howard? I, I used to keep tarantulas. And I used to feed them mealworms. <laughs> well, that's a good reason to to know the answer. Beetle is quite right. Okay. Good explanation. You guys keep tarantulas or not? Not knowing no, that. No, no, no. You never know when they'll pop up. But yeah. Here's your question. In classical mythology, Zephyrus was the god of which of the winds? West, south or east? Um, west. East is Eurus. South, I think, is Notus. I'm pretty sure Zephyrus was west. OK. Still OK. Yeah. 
I remember correctly, I'm, I'm pretty sure the east wind is Eurus. I've got an idea the south wind is Notus, and Zephyrus is the west wind. It is the west wind. Well done. They know stuff. These know quiz stuff. champions is your question. Which director was shot with an air rifle during a 2006 BBC interview, but later continued with the interview saying, it's not a significant bullet? Was it Roman Polanski, Lars von Trier, or Werner Herzog? Right. 2006. Two boys. I, I don't know. 2006. I don't know. BBC documentary. Well, they did a, they did a documentary on Polanski. Well, I was yeah, I was thinking Polanski. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think? I think we're all being. Yeah. Chris, yeah. Okay. yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Uh, we're not a hundred percent on this, Jeremy, but we'll go for Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski is your answer. Let me just try with the egg Are they right on it's, this? It's Herzog. Mm. I've seen the footage of it. It's bizarre. He was being interviewed sort of in a lay-by in the hills near Los Angeles, and halfway through the interview, Herzog started and pulled up his shirt, and there was a little, a little wound. Strange things happen to Werner Herzog. It's mm. sort of par for the course for him. <laughs> Do you know who was doing the interview? Mark Kermode. Yeah, it was Mark Kermode, yeah. It was Werner Herzog. Mark Kermode. Sorry, guys, you got that wrong. I'm amazed I've never seen, seen the footage of that. It's a quite obscure incident. So if you get this one right, Eggheads, you've won the contest. Who was shortlisted for three consecutive Edinburgh Comedy Awards for her shows Be Honourable, The Future is Another Place, and Romance and Adventure? Sue Perkins, Sarah Millican, or Josie Long? Well, with absolutely nothing to back mm. it, the name that I'd be most likely to guess would be Josie Long. Yeah, all right. Okay. But, um, I, no, I can see that. I have no evidence for us. It doesn't, all. I mean, I, I don't really know enough about this as a, as a subject, but. That doesn't really sound like Sarah Millican no, to me. No, it doesn't. The titles doesn't. don't sound like her. And does Sue Perkins go in much for that? She's done a little bit. I don't think she's I such know. a consistent campaigner that she'd have been nominated three yeah. years in a row. Yeah, and this is the Edinburgh Comedy Award, is it? Yeah. Yes, it is. I know Josie Long has been prominent at that, yes, hasn't she? she has. So, but it is speculation. I would yeah. guess wildly at Josie Long. No, OK, that's the same type. I do, if anything, Instinctive was there, it's her, so. Uh, we, we don't know it, Jeremy. Um, don't think it really sound, it sounds like Sarah Millican. Not too sure about Sue Perkins, but no Josie Long has been prominent at Edinburgh, so we'll go for Josie Long. You ruled out Sarah Millican, which was the right thing to do. Hmm. You were also right to rule out Sue Perkins. The answer is Josie Long. So we say, congratulations, eggheads, you have won. <laughs> I know you're all going to go and Google the, the shooting with Werner Herzog yeah, now. Yeah, watch it. You've done really, really Cheers. well. You played really well. You played like a real quiz team. So commiserations, you Dartford wobblers. You never wobbled, actually. Mm -hmm. The Eggheads have just done what comes naturally here. They got back into their stride a little bit, and they're beginning to reign supreme over Quizland again. Does mean you won't be going home with the £2,000, so the money rolls over to the next show. Eggheads, congratulations. Who will beat you? Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to defeat the eggheads. 3,000 pounds as they don't. Till then, goodbye. <laughs>